Yeah, hello and a warm welcome to the seminar Super Pro Designer, example two, second part. So, example two, second part. Um, so maybe an, a, a reminder what sample two is about. Uh, sample two is about um, the um, fermentation process. And uh, we have done the basic setup with a bioreactor, a fermenter, and upstream a medium pro media preparation before was the basic setup. And we have learned that we, in this case, as soon as we have more than one unit, we need to think of scheduling. And what we do now is we add now downstream units, we add a centrifuge, and we will add some blending tanks. And also there you would see that the major task then is scheduling so let's go back to the chart so what we have is so of course what i'm always referring to is our um, uh, script the example two script and uh, we have our process we have here our bioreactor we have our media preparation and if i do the mass balance everything should be fine and maybe i just save it Saving is always a good idea. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do now is we want to add a downstream process, namely we want to add a centrifuge. Uh, you don't sell your yeast right out of the fermenter. So um, you simply centrifuge it and enrich it. What we use is uh, we will use a centrifuge, um, which is um, a disk stack centrifuge, which is a continuous centrifuge. So it has, an, and you will see exactly how this looks like, of course, in downstream processing. So what we do is we will add a centrifuge here. So instead of the fermentation product going directly to nowhere, we want to add a centrifuge. So first of all, we need to delete the stream, and then we go to unit procedure. And then we go to where are we? Centrifugation. Here we are. And then we say we want to have a disk stack centrifuge. So we go somewhere, click and edit, and here it is. If you add a new unit, the best thing to do is start with uh, pressing F1, having a look what what is it all about. So because of course. You have no idea at the beginning if you add a new procedure, uh, what what um, connections you use, what connections are there, what is happening. So therefore, always first check it out. So you see here, this is the disk uh, procedure. You see here we have the feed in going. We have here oil outgoing. Oil, we say, oh, we don't know at that point. Um, this is water and this is solid. So you can also separate fats with this uh, and oil with the centrifuge. But we want to separate water and we want to separate solid. So this will be the port for the supernatant and this will be the port for our product because of course our yeast is in the product and this is the port where this transfer in occurs. So this is always a good idea. Just first check um, the help that you see what is the equipment looking like. And of course, then you could also uh, look like what, how is it operated and so on. This makes then of course very much sense later on. Okay, so that's, that's it. So we know now how it looks like. And now let's go. So what we do, what we do now is of course, we need to connect the streams. So first of all, we need the stream from the bioreactor to the centrifuge. Then we have a supernatant stream. And then we have our product stream. Okay, so I would immediately annotate the streams. Do that immediately. So edit, edit labels, and this is now supernatant and the other stream is I just right click the other stream is um, yeast product okay so this is the first thing I do now of course we need to initialize everything so the first thing so please refer to that step-by-step -step approach the first thing you do is you go back to this bioreactor because we have now redrawn a stream and this already worked before our mass balances worked so what we want to do is 
we want to make this work again. So we go to this bioreactor and we need to reinitialize the transfer out operation. Yeah. So, and the, pro the problem was that we have removed the stream. So therefore, um, it might be no more associated the stream with the transfer out operation. So we need to reinitialize that. Here it is. It's now in port four. It was before in port five. Port four, out, everything is fine. So this is now the same status as before. The stream is again assigned to that. Now we go to the centrifuge. Now we need to initialize at the, the unit procedures and we need to and we need to check um, and we need to initialize the procedures. So if we look here and if we right click on the centrifuge, normally we have no operation data here. We need to add first something, but we have by default for this centrifuge, the centrifuge operation. Well, it's a centrifuge. So if you add a centrifuge, you will centrifuge. So, and this is what we want to do. So nothing else to add. So we go to this centrifuge operation tag. Here we are. And now make it a bit larger again. Okay. So, now, if you look in your script, what we should do is um, we should initialize the unit operation uh, and we want to have a 97% efficiency for the separation of yeast. This is what we know because we have experience with the centrifuge and we have tested it and we know that we can separate 97%. In other words, 97% of the yeast will be then in, the, uh, in, the, in our product stream and 3% will be in the supernatant with the other soluble compounds which we do not separate. And of course we need to schedule, but first of all we need to initialize the operation. And again, you have now a screen which looks differently from that what you have seen before. So the operation operator conditions, of course, um, is, is different and all texts are different. And um, so you need to, in each case, you add a new unit, you need first to start reading what is it all about? And you say, okay, equipment design rating is based on solids removal. Exactly that. What we, that's what we want to do. We don't want to remove oil or fat, um, and we don't want to remove both. It's just about solids. There is no oily phase in this case. All the other things we don't really understand, so we keep them untouched. Another point is, hmm, um, where should we put our um, our our ninety seven percent? So you see here sedimentation efficiency thirty percent. Hmm. But maybe we go first to the tap material balance, and this looks good. So what we want to do is uh, we want we need we need to tell uh, the centrifuge operation that uh, ninety seven percent of the yeast are removed. In other words, we go here, and we have not an oil removal. So then we have a solid removal. And of course, carbon dioxide is still a soluble, glucose, nitrogen, oxygen. So the gas are no, not, not in the stream, but the, the other uh, uh, substances are solved. So they are not removed. The only substance which can be removed is yeast. And here we put our 97%. So this is, of course, something which is not so easy to find. The problem is you will experience that for every new, for every new procedure you 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 use uh, you will really need to fiddle around and look where do, you, do I need to put that you need really to think how this procedure is operated and where you can find that and this takes of course some time so a new each new new unit takes you an hour in order to understand what to put and don't get frustrated you will have to play around a bit and the important thing is always safe 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 always safe running con uh, working configurations try to fiddle around and go back to this uh, um, configuration to um, try another option um, because otherwise um, you will mess up the complete process nothing will work, the software will hang up and so on. This is then not the fun part. Okay, back to the screen. So now we have simply added, we have simply told the centrifuge, remove 97% of the solids. Okay, we could now of course already do a mass balance and uh, check whether it works and it's successfully. So we were lucky. However, 
uh, we didn't touch scheduling yet. So if we look at now the charts, scan chart, operation scan chart, you see as expected that our centrifuge operation is not connected to the other operations. This is of course something we need to change. So we need to schedule this. So there, now again, you need to think how these operations go together. So of course, one thing is when should the centrifugation operation start? So what is the time point when it starts? The time point when it starts, so we go in operation data and then in scheduling, the time point when it starts is as soon as the transfer out operation in the fermenter starts. Yeah. Um, because then fermentation is ready and then we pump something out. And this is a continuous process. So as soon as we pump through the centrifuge, the centrifuge is running. So this means we start the centrifuge operation as soon as we start the transfer out operation of um, the bioreactor. Okay, now this means we need to, we need to select here. Um, that the start is relative to another operation in another procedure. And the procedure here is, of course, um, oh, maybe I go small that you see it in the background. So this is the fermentation procedure. This is the centrifuge procedure. So it's the procedure P1 we are talking about. So it's procedure P1 in the FR101. And the operation we talk about is transfer out. Okay. So now it starts at the correct time point. Now we need to define the length. And now again, we need to think a bit. What is actually defining the length of the operation? So we have a transfer out operation where we have pumps, which for example, can pump 600 liters per hour. Um, of course, we could say we define the time based on the pump's capacity, but this makes no sense because uh, the centrifuge uh, will require a certain flow rate in order to operate optimally. So that to get this 97% separation efficiency, we need a certain flow rate. Indeed, we have set the time. If we look at operation data, we have here simply set the time for the operation centrifugation time set by user you could also calculate that uh, but here to simplify it we have simply set it to 240 minutes yeah so but this is at the end what dictates the time of the process so we have scheduled now the uh, centrifugation operation according to the transfer out procedure in the bioreactor but the time of the transfer out reactor will depend on the centrifuge. So it's not that the centrifuge is um, a slave both, is a slave with respect to scheduling and time. No, it's just started with respect to scheduling, but the slave operation is the transfer operation because the pumps will be regulated according to the needs of the centrifugation operation. So we go here to operation data, transfer out, and now we go here to uh, the process time set by master-slave relationship, set up. And now we go here and um, another procedure, of course, it's the centrifugation procedure, P3. And we match a single operation, we match the centrifuge operation. Now, the time of the transfer out step is defined by the centrifuge out operation. You see, this is getting a bit more complicated if you have the centrifuge steps and so on. You need to know what is happening there and adjust your uh, scheduling appropriately. Okay, now if we do that, hopefully also our mass balance works. This looks good. And now, of course, we can go to charts Gantt chart, operation Gantt chart, and now this looks perfect. So we have our um, 
transfer out operation and you see that the centrifuge operation is now scheduled according to the transfer out operation and you also see that the time of this operation is exactly matched to the centrifuge out operation we have defined to have it four hours and it is four hours and also the transfer out operation is four hours there is no buffer in between so you pump directly through the centrifuge in a continuous process so now we have successfully set up the centrifuge everything is fine and of course now we need to check the content so let's see whether we also have achieved the separation efficacy so let's double click here and you see we have 29.1 kilogram of yeast in the stream and we have oops double click here this was on the paper Next try. And we have here 0.9 kilograms. So this exactly corresponds to this 97%. So the 3% are in the supernatant, 97% are in the product. And this is hopefully exactly what we expect to see also in our uh, script. And this makes me happy. Yes, it does. And of course, also the, the chart looks good. Good. So this is adding this downstream unit a centrifuge. And you see that the way to do the scheduling master-slave relationships, of course, depends also on your procedure. The scheduling is clear. It's just that uh, when the start point uh, is defined. However, to define the length of the processes depends on what you add. Yeah? So this is an example here. Now, if you look at this process, um, it's not that this process is... Um, already excellent just before we have put it some units you have to think of that in a in a real world um matter so we are at 2.4 usually large bioreactors are um are stationary so you cannot move them around centrifuges especially larger centrifuges are usually also stationary because you you have to fix them with respect to rotation and so on so this means that if you want to transfer something from a bioreactor to a centrifuge um, and these are um, stationary devices, you would have to uh, install tubings for that. This is the case in, in large uh, manufacturing sites where you have really uh, tubings and valves and, and you have uh, tons of tubes. Unfortunately, we don't do that excursion, but you would have seen that, for example, also in Max Erono and Boxmeer. The problem is, it's, um, it, it, it's really high cost if you inst have to install all the fixed tubings. Often in smaller production sites, what you do, and if you need to be more flexible because um, there are, you have several operations and you produce on demand, what you do is that you don't fix everything with tubings, but you simply have storage tanks in between, which you can move freely around. This is one thing. The other thing is, if we have a look in this process, um, and if we look again at the, at the GAN chart, operations GAN chart, so the transfer out operation could have been faster from the bioreactor because the pumps we could uh, use faster, but you remember it's now um, a slave of the centrifuge process. So it's, it, the transfer out is slower because the centrifuge is running. And of course, as long as we transfer something out from the bioreactor, we cannot use the bioreactor for something else. So we block the bioreactor for the transfer out operation. And the bioreactor is our most expensive equipment here in the complete uh, line. So this is not really this is not really smart uh, to occupy a bioreactor for this transfer out operation. So it's it's smarter to have. Um, blending tank or storage tank we just uh, put that in um, this tank we can move to somewhere else to where our centrifuge is situated and then our bioreactor is empty we can start cleaning the bioreactor in parallel to the centrifugation process this means what we do now is we will add blending tanks and we do that usually one by one but as the last tank is just a storage tank I add both of them immediately. So what we do is we will have a storage uh, um, um, a tank in between, which we use for transfer, and we will add a tank here, which we use for collection of the product. Okay, so we need to remove these streams. And we need to remove the stream. And then we just add unit procedures. 
Storage Blending, Bulk Batch in a Blending Tank, one Blending Tank here, and we add Storage Blending, Bulk Batch in a Blending Tank, one Blending Tank here. Okay, then we draw again the streams, one stream, and the other stream goes to the centrifuge, and then we have a stream which goes from the centrifuge to the last blending tank. Um, the cool thing is that this stream is automatically initialized. We didn't need to do it before, so there was no problem. And the first thing we do, you remember, is um, we check that this operation here is rescued because the, the fermentation unit already worked. Bring that back to work first. So we start with this, right-click, operations data, and again, we need to take care about the transfer out operation. So there are two things. We need to check our port. So again, we have connected it to another port. It's now again port five. And the process time here is now, of course, also different. So now we'd say it's calculated by user <clears throat> based on the mass flow rate, because now we have no more master-slave relationship. It's just pumping everything out. Yeah. So, and we want to add here a volumetric flow rate of 600 liters per hour. Okay. So this is now back um, uh, to what is being defined. In the centrifuge at present, we just need a re in scheduling we do at the seven point. Yeah, Schedule, it's not about scheduling. It's just getting these um, unit operations back to the correct connections and so on and back to work. Um, the scheduling we do at the end. First, make the operations run. So for the centrifugation procedure, we don't, don't need to care because this is the default um, entry port and this is the default out port and therefore the procedure itself, no changes will be there. So now, of course, we have to go for the blending and storage tanks and we have to add and remove operations. So what operations do we need here? Very simple. Um, for um, the, the blending tank, we need to pump something in and pump something out. So we have a transfer in, transfer in, and we have a transfer out. And in, in between, for example, if you know that you need to move uh, the storage tank from room one to room B, and you know that this moving the storage tank takes you 20 minutes, you could also introduce a hold operation, of course, um, uh, taking this into account. Okay. So now we have the procedures, and now we need to initialize them. Operation data, transfer in. And of course, the stream we need to initialize it is the stream 102. Everything else we keep untouched. We don't talk about scheduling now. Yeah? We just initialize the stream. So we uh, do the connections and we initialize the operations. So if there would be, um, if there would be, let's say, a reaction or whatsoever, this is what we do now. We don't touch scheduling. Again, do it step by step to reduce complexity. So this means that um, th this is correctly connected. And now we go to number two. And this is the transfer out. And of course, this needs to be connected to this. And also here, we leave it at that point unchanged. Okay. Now we have our last landing storage tank. Also here, we just need to add Transfer in operation, okay. And we need to initialize it with respect to the stream. Operation data. And this is the stream 104, okay. Now the operation do what they should do. And now the streams are correctly connected. 
And now we come to the scheduling. Of course, we don't need to push um, uh, mass balance at that point because we know that the scheduling will not work because the new procedures, uh, the new um, procedures we have added will start from the beginning. So we have to schedule them appropriately. So let's start with this blending storage procedure. So we go to operation data, um, transfer in. So obviously, the scheduling of this operation, it should start with the transfer out operation of our fermenter. That's like before. So we can only start with the transfer in as when the fermenter starts the transfer out. So we go to relative to another operation in another procedure. Relative to another operation in another procedure, select the bioreactor, you see the bioreactor is this FR101, P1, FR101. So this is this one, and it's the transfer out procedure. By the way, there is another way. I just press cancel that you that you see this another way. Um, we can also say the time. So we go here, operation data, transfer in. So there are, of course, two things. This is the time when it starts and the the scheduling time, so also this, always do it. Also, uh, although the, the pumps usually are set to the same values, but what I would always do that you have no things in between, define one operation as a master operation that the other operation has the same, um, that the same time span. So we should also define for the time it takes the transfer out operation as the master operation, and um, I just of the of the bioreactor, and I'm just showing you um, why this makes sense to do that first because then uh, the other thing is easier. That's just just one click. So we have again um, our fermenter, and the single operation we want to match is the transfer out operation. Okay, so this is the duration, which is the duration is now defined as the transfer out, but not yet the scheduling. We have aborted that. But now what I can do is I can simply click sync with master and then um, this is automatically transferred and then things are easier. Okay, so our transfer in works now. And now we come to our transfer out. And the point with the transfer out is First of all, we need to go now to the centrifuge. So the centrifuge, scheduling of the centrifuge, the start of this is no more. It was before the transfer out of the bioreactor, but this is no more the case. Now it is the transfer out of the blending storage tank. And this is procedure four, as you see. So we have to select procedure four, transfer out. So now the scheduling here is correct. And now, again, the timing of this transfer out operation of the blending tank, we go here to transfer out, is a slave, master-slave relationship with respect to, again, the centrifuge and again, the centrifuge operation. Okay, okay. So again, remember, the, um, this is some, somehow a bit yeah, confusing, but remember the starting point when the centrifuge starts is when the transfer out starts of this blending storage tank. Yeah? And this starts after the transfer in is stopped. This is automatically scheduled. However, the time how long this transfer out takes is dictated by the centrifuge so that to achieve this 97% uh, efficacy. So we need to put this as a slave. Yeah? This, the, the, so the scheduling and master-slave relationship is there separate. Yeah? Okay. Now we have done that. We have scheduled correctly for the centrifugation. We have scheduled correctly for the blending storage. But now we also need to schedule that for the last blending tank. Yeah. And let's go there and go to the operation. We have just one operation. We have already associated the correct stream. And now if we want to schedule this operation, 
we have the same. We start, of course, also here. Oops. Okay, that's a bit difficult. We start, of course, also here relative to the transfer out of this P4. Could, of course, also start with a centrifuge here. It doesn't matter. Um, and then the timing is also dictated by the centrifuge operation. Oops. Match a single operation, centrifuge. Okay. So we could do two things. We could also say, mm, let's be smarter. Uh, we sync this with a centrifuge operation, which is, of course, also correct. Because if we remove here something, um, then this doesn't also affect this operation here. So that's maybe the smarter solution. Okay. And now let's hope that everything works fine. Luck. And uh, this is also for me always a bit a big moment if there <laughs> if there are not uh, 500 error messages. And now let's first have a look what is inside my storage tank here. In this storage tank, of course, um, I should have now my 29 point something um, kilogram yeast. And here we are. So 29.1 something kilogram yeast are inside. I didn't vent, so the pressure goes up and so on. So of course you would say, but you have to vent. But the point is, this doesn't change something about the, the cost and so on. So who cares? Yeah. So it's also not something that we need to take care about vent emissions of all these things. So therefore, um, it's it's easier to just omit it that reduces the complexity. Yeah. Um, it's clear in a real world operation that you would vent and don't close the... Um, Close the valve, so this is this is normal. Okay, so uh, this looked good, and now let's uh, have at the same time a look at the GAN chart, and you see also this looks good. So we have our ferment reaction, we have our transfer out reaction, the transfer in reaction of our blending storage tank P4 is the blending storage tank. This is this one here starts with a. Um, transfer out of the bioreactor and then the transfer out then is dictated by the centrifuge and you see that these the timings here are different so the uh, this step of course is faster because the pumps can run full speed and here it's slower because it's dictated about the with respect to the centrifuge remember we have now a process which is non-sterile, which is certainly not such a good idea, but we, we wanted to have to keep the things simple. So we talk about scheduling and so on, and uh, it's not yet the complete process. So again, um, what I would, if I were you, check out the Beta Galactose Days process, which is uh, an, an example process. Uh, check this out after you have done um, this example one and example two. Um, check this out before you start setting up your own process because this better collect to the days process uh, includes many things you will require for your own process also. And it's way easier uh, if in a running process, for example, check how anion exchange chromatography is uh, being initialized uh, than doing it yourself from the scratch just with a, with a small help file. Yeah? So just, just have a look in that. Okay, we had one problem. The, the process is not non-sterile. This we, we keep. Um, but also, um, you need to clean the equipment yeah? <laughs> in between. So, and uh, this, is, this is industry. So, of course, um, it's not a cleaning of a, of, a, of a fermenter with two meter cube or something else than cleaning your Almayer flask where you just pour some water. Maybe you, you brush it a bit and then it goes in the washing uh, uh, in the dishwasher more or less this you cannot do with a bioreactor of this size so what you have there are stationary um, cleaning devices SIP it's, this is called SIP cleaning in place so these are devices which pump through with a certain cycle um, a cleaning liquids um, through, the, uh, through the reactor and um, first start with an acidic solution alkaline solution and so on rinse with water and this is an automatic process and of course you need to have then such a sip in order to do that this costs of course money yeah so and now let's um, just add this sip 
to our process. So how do we do that? Well, we don't add a zip here. In this case, we just need to add an operation and then the zip is included. Yeah. So where do we want to clean? We don't care about our blending storage tanks because they're non-stationary. We can move them around. So we want to add a zip process, a cleaning in place process for our fermentation process. Zip. And we want to add a zip process for our centrifuge that not zip, but zip, because the zip is the sterilization in place and we don't care about sterilization at that point. And we add, uh, stop, we should add it also. I forgot to add it. Zip. Now it's here. Now, of course, also we need to initialize these processes. So we go first to the bioreactor and go to zip. And now this looks like this. And you see also this is again looking completely different. We can define a cleaning step sequence. So we don't do that because we don't know exactly at that point what cleaning sequence we should use. But you see you can increase the complexity. So it, this is the cool thing about this software. If you feel that it's getting too simple, no problem uh, to find a way to increase the complexity. This, ma this makes me happy and hopefully also makes you happy. Um, it's, it's hard to get bored with this software. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm just looking what I should do based on what is, uh, what is said here. So of course, uh, as okay, we leave, leave all these things unchanged. So here we have uh, the consumption. So this is what's running through the vessel. And of course, you need a lot of water and cleaning liquid. And we should consider that in skid sizing. So this is, the, um, the, this is uh, cleaning in place. Um, let's say the, 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 the unit itself, it's called a zip skid. This is the name how you tell it. So And you, of course, need to size it. You can have a very small one. But, but if you have a huge bioreactor, you need a huger um, skid zip. And this means that then in this case, um, the, the liquid which is required for that should be taken into account for sizing of this equipment. And this is, of course, we do. And now, of course, we want to have, uh, we don't, you could ignore the um, that we need a zip for that because you say, well, it's, um, it's not relevant in this process with respect to costs and so on. Uh, so I just want to have it with respect to timing. This you can also do because my, my company is running. I know that the, uh, that the SIPS kit we have um, can easily handle also this process. I don't want to um, assign this with respect to cost to this process because it's uh, only a marginal. So I ignore all this and uh, maybe just look at the consumables. So I consider the consumption, but I don't uh, want to add a new skit. But, but, but we want to add this. We want to have one now. And now we go ignore, uh, we unclick that. And of course, we have not yet a SIPS kit, so we create a new one, which is called SIPS kit 101. So this is the first one. And now we go to our centrifuge. And we go to operation data, SIP1. And the same here. The consumption should be considered in sizing. And also here, we don't want to ignore the SIPS kit, but now we don't want to create a new one. We want to use an existing one, namely the SIPS kit 101. Okay. So now, hopefully, if we press the button with the mass balance, everything is fine. Head to the other direction. And it successfully, this makes us happy. And now we can again go to the charts, gun chart, Operation GAN chart. And you see now we have a tiny little SIP operation added at the end for the um, fermentation and for the centrifuge. You see that the time of this is not so long, but still we need it. And a SIP uh, skit can only operate in one unit and then switch to the next unit. Yeah, So these are then fixed tubings and so on. Uh, and then you can automatically just run this program. Okay, now you know how to 
schedule. Now you know how to add downstream units. You can now go and make your complete process with respect to the knowledge. Have fun. Thank you and goodbye.